Hi friends and First Baptist Church Lathrop. My name is Omar Segovia and I'm happy to be one of your guest speakers. I encourage, for those of you that don't know, please tune in to First Baptist Lathrop, Missouri in their website. Great messages from Pastor Ron and others for bringing God's Word to you. Well, today I want to speak about hope. And that hope found in a burning heart for the Lord. They're in Luke 24 with a key verse, verse 32, about burning hearts. Now, as you turn to Luke 24, uh, let me just uh, say that for those of you that know me or don't know me, uh, I love rugby. In fact, I know some very fanatical people who love this sport. Uh, one particular friend that comes to mind, she, I remember the first time she described her experience w uh, attending one of the universities here in Missouri was when she went to her first practice and experienced her first tackle. The way she described it sounded very familiar to somebody <laughs> converting to God. And this particular friend, in fact, was a catalyst to start multiple uh, rugby teams here in Missouri. But I remember when uh, she shared her story, uh, I also thought, I can identify with that, but I know something greater, a greater experience, a, 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 and that is a relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. And today I want to speak on that because I think it's very relevant, thinking about the hope uh, and the uncertain times that we, that, uh, that we live in and, and how can we find a purpose for life. Even in this past week, you can turn on the news and hear about the death of George Floyd, a tragic uh, incident. The authorities are taking care of it. But it, uh, it brings up the question, what's it going to take to transform people's hearts? What's it going to take for this country to change and for the races to love each other and work together? I think education is good and there's many other things, but the most important is the heart change. I believe the Bible has the answer that the root of the problem is sin and pride. And that can only be cured or uh, resolved through a relationship with Christ. So here in, um, in the Bible, I think the, there's many verses that speak about hope, such as in the Old Testament, when God spoke to his people there in Jeremiah 29, 11. There, if you look at that passage, it says that, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans of to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me, and you will find me when you search with me, search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Just those passages alone are enough for us for today. But what is even more incredible is that God, who spoke these words, became a man in the person of Jesus. And, and now we're in Luke 24, where we have God in the flesh walking amongst his people. In Luke 24, in the beginning of that chapter, it is Sunday, it's the third day since Jesus Christ had been crucified, and some of uh, the female disciples came to the tomb to uh, put, uh, put spices on the body. But as they came to the tomb, they found the, the stone rolled away. They entered the tomb and they found uh, it empty. And then these two angelic beings appeared to these women who became frightened, uh, obviously seeing the splendor of these, uh, these beings. And they said, do not be afraid. And why are you looking for the one, uh, for the living, for the living one amongst the dead? He is not here; he is risen. And explain to them that Jesus is alive. These women ran to the the apostles and to others gathered around and shared the news. But unfortunately, there in Luke twenty four verse eleven it says, "But these words appeared to them as nonsense, and they would not believe them." This, my friend, brother, sister, is the greatest problem in our world today. We have the facts of Jesus. We have his word. But there's people that still consider it as nonsense and do not believe. What about you, friend? Do you consider this nonsense? Do you disbelieve? If you disbelieve, what's going to take for that to change? I hope in these few minutes as we meditate on God's Word, 
uh, can persuade you, encourage you to change, or at least begin the steps towards that. And my purpose for, for preaching uh, in, uh, today is that we can have burning hearts. The word for hope, I connect that burning heart. But we can have burning hearts when we seek to know God's truth through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And from Luke 24, there are two primary truths that I want us to seek out for. The first truth is seek to know Jesus through the Bible. Seek to know Jesus through the Bible. Here in Luke 24, verse 13, it says, it reads, And behold, two of them were going that very day, two disciples, to a village named Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all the things which had been taking place. And while they were talking and discussing, or the word discuss there can also mean they were debating, disputing. Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you are walking? And they stood still, looking sad. One of them, named Cleopas, answered and said to him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and unaware of the things which have happened here in these days? If this was uh, the internet age, uh, they would say, You haven't seen this online? Uh, you, the video has gone viral of this brutal death. Are you the only one that hasn't tuned in? Are you the only one? They had no idea who they were talking to. And here in this story, they couldn't recognize that the one who came close to them was Jesus himself. This, my friend, reminds us of, we may not see God personally, but like this passage, Jesus is walking near you. In fact, God is, if you pay attention, he's constantly trying to get our attention so that we would turn our hearts to searching for him looking for him because he wants all those who are far to him to draw close so jesus walks close to us in fact in psalm 139 it even speaks about the knowledge of the lord uh, that we cannot escape him that even before uh, we were in our one mother's womb he knew us he already had plans for us but jesus also comes alongside and he wants us uh he wants us to know the truth in fact in and there in, in, somewhere in John it says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. We need truth. And when we truly know the truth, it will set us free. Here they begin to uh, answer Jesus and, and explain to him from verse 19 what they understood who, who this Jesus was. Uh, they, they said, The things about Jesus is Nazarene. Yeah, that's true. Who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word in the sight of God and all the people. And, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to the sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. In other words, we were hoping that he would make Israel great again. Indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things have happened. But also some women amongst us amazed us when they were at the tomb early in the morning. And they did not find the body. They came saying that they have also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of us who were with, with us went to the tomb and found it just exactly as the women also had said. But him they did not see. Here Jesus uh, confronts them because later he responds, uh, O foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Now in our English language it Oh, foolish ones, oh, foolish men, sounds a little bit harsh. But really what he was saying in the original language and culturally is, you who are slow to understand, uh, you've heard so much about this, but you still are slow of heart and slow of belief. And then from Moses and the prophets, he begins to explain who Christ is and why he came and, and had to die and on the third day rise again. This had to happen. Not all paths lead to Jesus. Uh, when I think about this, I think about not just uh, religions that have a false view of Jesus, that it's not biblical, 
but also for the others who disbelieve. One who comes to mind is uh, Josh McDowell. Uh, you can look up his testimony. He came uh, from a small town in Michigan, but unfortunately grew up in a very abusive home. His dad was a town drunk, would beat him, beat his mom, uh, beat his uh, siblings, and uh, and he was he, he was abused by him. And if you hear his testimony, he was also sexually abused by another man who supposedly was to take care of him. Years later, right after he graduated from high school, his mom died. He believes the reason why she died was because of, because of abuse and because of depression. Because of uh, all, all these experiences, uh, Josh became an atheist. Because he, he thought, if there is a good God, why did he allow all this to happen? Later, he went to university and he met some friends. And, and these particular friends were different than the, the other friends. There was a peace that he had not seen. In fact, he asked uh, one uh, young lady, what's different about you guys? What, I noticed there's, there's something different that I haven't seen in you. And he, her response were two words. Jesus Christ. He responded, don't give me any of that garbage. Send some other bad words. But fortunately, he still uh, remained friends with, uh, with her and others, a uh, part of this Christian group. Sometime later, the, the friends finally challenged him and said, Josh, you need to research and see if this is historically true, because it is true. So Josh ended up taking a whole semester off and began investigating, at first to prove his friends wrong, that there wasn't a historical Jesus, and all that they were following is no different than any other religion. He even traveled to the Middle East, Europe, and in his testimony he shares that he was in a library. He had all this evidence before him. And in the library, he raised his voice and said, It is true! It is true! He did not become a Christian yet, but things began to turn. Well, then later he began to read the scriptures with a with open mind. So the first thing is, seek to know Jesus through the Bible. The second truth I want to encourage us is, seek to know Jesus personally. Do you know that Jesus desires that, not for us to just understand this intellectually, but that we invite him into our lives, into our home? As you continue in the story, uh, he, you know, walking with these two disciples, to Emmaus, they arrive in Emmaus, it's, uh, it's already getting dark, and these uh, disciples say to Jesus, hey, uh, why don't you stay with us? It's already dark. So they invited Jesus into their, their home, and they, they had food, and Jesus broke bread. It says there, and they recognized, maybe the way he broke the bread, this looked familiar. And in verse 31, and their eyes were open, and they recognized them, and he vanished from their sight. And it says in verse 32, and here's our, our key verse, Were not our hearts burning within us, while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us? That verse, my friend, is jam-packed with uh, truth and application. Here, the Lord desires for us to invite him into our home and into our life so that we too can have a, a burning heart like these disciples. <clears throat> this reminds me of Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, where it says, Jesus is saying, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens a door, I will come into him and dine with him, dine with him and he with me. My friend, Jesus is knocking the door of your heart. Do you hear him? And he's asking, can I come in? I want to have a relationship with you. And this is what these disciples did. They went from disbelief to belief to a burning heart for the Lord. The story of Josh McDowell continues because as uh, his eyes became open, as it says there in verse 31, like the disciples, their eyes became open, very similar uh, in verse 45, when Jesus appears to the apostles, he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Very interesting connecting the two. Jesus opened eyes. Jesus opened minds. So we would not just understand the scriptures, but to truly know Christ and receive him as our Lord and Savior. So Josh began to look at the scriptures and with now with a heart of openness and belief, 
that, okay, this is historical. And it came to the point where he had to uh, either reject the truth that he read in the Bible or receive Christ. But he chose to receive because in it he discovered that God desired to forgive him of his sins, that God loved Josh. And he prayed a prayer. In his prayer, in his testimony, he said four things he said in his prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Second, he confessed, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I confess my sins to you. And third, I want a relationship with you that is not religion. And he finished off with, with thank you. He didn't experience fireworks. But as he began walking with the Lord, different things started changing his life, like such as uh, his temper, and people started seeing the change. And then uh, about some time later, he felt God convicting him that he needed to approach his father. His dad, who had, he had not talked to for years, the dad, he despised the town drunk. He went back to this, the town that his dad lived in, found him at a diner, and he approached him and said, Dad, I love you. And, I, and he also explained that he became a Christian. Shortly after that, he had a car accident. He was in the hospital there on the bed. And his dad comes into the hospital room. And this is the first time he saw his dad sober. But his dad was also crying. He came into the hospital room, fell on uh, Josh McDowell and said, Son, how can you love a dad like me who has abused you? And Josh says to him, Dad, six months ago, I despised you. I hated you. I despised everything you, that you stood for. Dad, I, but I've learned something. That God became a man. His name is Jesus. He is real. He is true. And he also said, Dad, God is not only passionate about a relationship with me, but he's passionate about a relationship with you. And shortly after, his dad, who was crying, knelt down at the bedside and gave his life to Christ. Because of the 40 years plus of, of abusing alcohol, uh, his dad only lived 14 months after that. But in those 14 months, he turned from being the town drunk to the town evangelist, and many people came to know Christ and saw that if God can change a man like him, he can change me. And there's a lot more to Josh McDowell. God has used him tremendously. But as we conclude, um, my purpose for preaching is that we can't have a burning heart. But it's found when we seek God's truth through a relationship with Jesus. My family, I was born in Chile and my family moved to Canada uh, when I was six. And God used a whole immigrant experience to humble my parents. And thanks to uh, a Christian friend, my parents were connected to a church there for the first time they heard about God. At first they saw Christianity as a re another religion, but it, they understood, no, what God wants is a relationship. So my parents became Christians, they gave their life to Christ. So since I was six, I heard about God, heard about Jesus, but I had not made a decision to receive Christ. Until a summer when my family went on a camping trip, I was nine years old. And my dad was driving, my mom was sitting in the front, and I was sitting in the back with my younger brother and sister. But I remember that, that day, my dad lost the directions. It was getting dark. My parents began to panic. And I thought, wow, we are lost. So I said this simple prayer, God, help my dad find the, the way. A few minutes later, on some country road, my dad you know, parked the car went to a house, and with the little English that he knew, he asked for directions. Shortly after, he came back to the car and said, I know the right way. And I remember seeing him and my mom rejoicing, thanking God that now they knew where to go. It was just a simple prayer, but it impacted me because I realized, wow, God answers prayer. But I also realized that I had not given my life to Christ. The reason for that is that I knew that it'd be surrendering everything, my future, and, and even service to him. But that even I decided I got to do it. So I prayed asking Jesus to forgive me of my sins. 
And I asked, I said, save me, be the savior of my life. But I also said, here I am. I'm here to serve you in any way possible. And I remember when I said that prayer, it was the first time I felt the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit because I started crying. I mean, I uncontrollably. And I remember, although it was dark, I remember covering my face because I didn't want to see my family see me crying. Uh, but the next day at the campsite, I told my dad, Dad, last night in the car, I prayed to receive Christ. And I want to say, although my life was not perfect, uh, one thing is certain. I have never been able to escape God. And something else that's certain, I have had not one regret the day that I lived for Jesus. And even today, I'm here because of that decision. So friend, have you made that kind of decision? Have you given your life to Christ? Christian, understand that belief in Jesus is not enough. It's surrendering Him and saying, here I am. I, use my life. I want to serve you. I don't know where you're at, but let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this message. And I pray for the believer that is listening, that you would revive their heart, that they would surrender completely. And maybe as a believer, there may be disbelief in some area, but Lord, turn doubts to greater belief. And for the person that doesn't know Christ, I invite you to say this prayer. What God is looking for is the attitude of your heart and sincerity. And I'll lead you in this prayer. But understand too, is that to grow in the Christian life, you can't go solo. God wants to use your life. And one of the places is begin sharing with others around you, but also be connected to a Bible-believing family called a church. Um, if you live near Lathrop, this is a good church, a healthy church. Um, but if you don't know one or, um, you know, contact the, the church website and they'll help you out. But pray with me. Dear Jesus, I believe you came to this earth and you died on the cross for my sins. I ask that you forgive me of my sins. I ask that you become my Savior and my Lord. Take my life, Jesus. I want to live for you. And I want to serve you in any way that you desire for me to. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, friend, uh, please contact the church so that others can pray with you and give you some guidance and, and help you to know what the next steps are. Well, thank you.